In the 6th century BC, Thales of Miletus, a Greek philosopher noticed the special effects of magnetic stones. It was believed that the stones had an invisible force and a soul because they could move and cling to surfaces. These special characteristics were not only observed by ancient Greeks but also in China. The name magnet is said to come from the Greek word lithos magnes, while others attribute the name to be from the city of Magnesia in Asia Minor in Turkey. Nevertheless, magnets are pieces of metal attracted through a magnetic field to another metal object. This magnetic field is invisible to the naked eye. So what constitutes a magnet or why do magnets attract or repel other materials? This raises a cause for concern because of the mystery associated with it, and that needs to be explained. Also, have you ever wondered how magnets are made? Those mysterious objects that stick to your fridge, help navigate your compass, and even power your electric car. Magnets have become a ubiquitous part of our daily lives, silently serving us in ways we often overlook. They're not just toys for science experiments, they're vital components in many of our modern technologies. The process of making them, however, remains a mystery to many. Stay tuned as we unravel the fascinating process of magnet creation. Before we dive into the making of magnets, it's crucial to understand what magnetism is. Magnetism is a force of attraction or repulsion that acts at a distance. It's due to a magnetic field, which is caused by moving electrically charged particles or is inherent in magnetic objects such as a magnet. Every magnet has two points of maximum intensity, called poles. One is the North Pole and the other the South Pole. Now here's the fascinating part. Magnets don't just attract any object. They're choosy. They love some metals like iron, nickel and cobalt, and give a cold shoulder to others. And when it comes to another magnet, they have a peculiar behavior. Like poles repel each other, while unlike poles attract. Yes, it's a bit like a dramatic soap opera, isn't it? Now that we understand magnetism, let's explore how we can create a magnet. Creating a magnet isn't magic, it's science. Our journey to creating a magnet begins with the selection of a magnetic material. Iron, nickel and cobalt are the most common choices, with each one having its unique properties. These materials are known as ferromagnetic substances, and they are at the heart of magnet creation. Once we've selected our material, the process of magnetization begins. This is where things get really interesting. You see, every atom in our chosen material has its own tiny magnetic field, created by the electrons spinning around the nucleus. Usually, these atoms are pointing in all different directions, cancelling each other out. But when we magnetize the material, we align these atoms in the same direction. This alignment creates a magnetic field, and voila, we have the beginnings of a magnet. But how do we align these atoms? Well, we use an external magnetic field. This could be from an existing magnet, or more commonly from an electric current. When our material is exposed to this external field, the atoms start to shift and align with the field. The stronger the external field, the more atoms align, and the stronger our magnet becomes. Now here's a crucial point to remember. Once the external field is removed, some materials will keep their magnetic properties, while others will lose them. This is the difference between permanent magnets, like the ones on your fridge, and temporary magnets, like a paperclip that's been magnetized by a magnet, but loses its magnetism once the magnet is removed. But it's not just about aligning atoms. The process also involves shaping the magnet. This is done through a process called grinding, which shapes the magnet into its final form. Whether it's a bar, a horseshoe, or a disc, the shape of the magnet can affect its magnetic field and how it's used. So we have our magnet, but it's not quite ready yet. A rough magnet needs some fine tuning before it's ready for use. After the birth of a magnet, it's a bit like a diamond in the rough. It has potential, but it needs some refining to reach its full magnetic glory. The process of magnetizing, shaping and coating the magnet is what turns this piece of metal into the magnetic marvel we know and love. Let's start with magnetizing. This process is what gives the magnet its magnetic properties. It's a little like waking up a sleeping giant. The magnet is placed inside a coil of wire, and a strong electrical current is passed through. This aligns all the tiny magnetic domains within the magnet, pointing them in the same direction and creating a powerful magnetic field. Next comes shaping. The magnet is carefully crafted into the shape that best suits its purpose. This could be a simple bar shape, a horseshoe, or even a more complex design. 
the shape of a magnet can greatly affect its magnetic field, so this step is crucial for the magnet's effectiveness. The final step is coating. This is like the magnet's suit of armor, protecting it from the elements. The coating is typically a layer of nickel, although other materials can be used. This not only makes the magnet more durable, but it also helps to enhance its magnetic properties. Throughout this process, each step is meticulously carried out, ensuring the magnet is just right. It's a delicate dance between science and artistry, where precision is key. And voila, from a piece of metal to a powerful magnet, the transformation is complete. It's a testament to our human ingenuity, turning a simple piece of metal into a tool that can attract or repel, that can hold things together or push them apart. It's truly magical to see the journey of a magnet, from its humble beginnings to its finishing touches. And it's just one example of how science can transform the ordinary into the extraordinary. Magnets, simple yet fascinating, aren't they? We've journeyed together from the initial intrigue of magnetism to the birth of a magnet, and finally its finishing touches. It's quite a process, isn't it? From the raw materials through heating, cooling, and aligning their domains, we create these marvels of physics. And what's even more amazing is how far-reaching the applications of these tiny powerhouses are. Think about it. Magnets are everywhere. They're in our computers, helping read and write data on our hard drives. They're in our hospitals, making MRI scans possible. They're even in our everyday objects like fridge magnets and compasses. But it doesn't stop there. Magnets are also in the cutting-edge technology of today, like maglev trains and quantum computers. And who knows where they'll take us in the future? The possibilities are as limitless as our curiosity. So there you have it, a little glimpse into the world of magnets. I hope it sparked a bit of curiosity in you, a desire to learn more about the wonders of science. Because that's what it's all about, isn't it? Feeding our curiosity, expanding our understanding, and sharing that knowledge with others. If you found this video enlightening and want to learn more about the wonders of science, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Remember, knowledge is power, and sharing it only makes it grow. See you in our next video.